So in today's class we will uh, look at uh, some more approximate solutions but this time we will take into account the pressure gradient term you know uh, in the last couple of classes we have ignored the pressure gradient we have done the approximate solution for flat plate and we have assumed uh, say a linear profile and we saw with the linear profile you get some kind of a number which is uh, in terms of the boundary layer thickness and the skin friction coefficient they are little bit off from the exact solution if you assume a cubic profile it is much closer okay so it I mean it is something to do with the right boundary conditions that you are satisfying so you start with the wall boundary conditions which are to be satisfied and then go to the free stream boundary conditions so if you satisfy those necessary boundary conditions definitely your solution accuracy will improve and uh, today what we will do is we will extend this basic uh, approximate methods to also non blaseous cases and we will start uh, with a very general uh, solution and uh, this solution is called as uh, von Karman Polhausen method. okay so this is also an extension of the boundary layer integral method but this is applied to any general case now you, know, you can think that this is a Faulkner scan case instead of a similarity solution we are doing this by new uh, by the approximate methods so this method was first introduced by Polausen so that is why it is named after him and in fact not only by that not only by, by that this name is given as Polhausen method but also von Karman was involved because it was von Karman who has who had given the idea to Polhausen you know von Karman was a student of Prantl and uh, he gave the suggestion to Polhausen that uh, we can extend these approximate solutions um, to a class of problems including the pressure gradient so therefore this method was named after both these uh, pioneers and called as von Karman Polhausen method and this is a complicated method in terms of solution so later on it was simplified considerably by a person called Waltz and this came to be known as uh, the Waltz approximation okay so Waltz introduced a further approximation to the integral solution of uh, von Karman and Polhausen so some in some books this is also referred to as Thwait, Thwaites approximation okay Thwait weights approximation so both both mean the same thing uh, the same kind of approximation they have introduced okay so the basic uh, assumption in this case before we go into the von Karman Polhausen let us rewrite the uh, boundary uh, boundary layer integral equation for a generic case so d by dx okay so this was the generic momentum integral that we had derived where what is your delta 2 this is your momentum integral okay so 1 over uh, you can write this as 1 over u infinity or I will take the u infinity inside so 0 to delta 1 minus u by u infinity into u by u infinity dy okay and delta 1 is your so this is your momentum thickness or momentum integral this is your displacement thickness zero to delta one minus u by u infinity dy okay so in the case of blasher solution we ignored this term and then we simply had only the momentum integral and then we substituted the approximate profile and integrated it out in this case we have to also retain the term which includes the displacement thickness okay so so now the next step uh, what we are going to do is to make a guess for the approximate velocity profile now in this case 
you have included this term because your u infinity is going to be a function of x so this includes uh, any kind of general case uh, including the Faulkner's can wedge problem now in order to first substitute you know we have to make a guess value so what what von Karman Polhausen did okay in fact uh, Polhausen's profile was something like this he used a fourth order quartic polynomial a plus b eta plus c eta square plus d eta cube plus e eta power 4 okay so where your eta was defined basically as y upon delta okay so he assumed a fourth order polynomial okay not a linear not a quadratic neither cubic okay so why he did it in fact so in order to satisfy what we call this important boundary conditions and when you include also the pressure gradient another boundary condition has to be satisfied okay we will see those following boundary conditions which have to be applied to find these coefficients so at y equal to 0 so what is the boundary condition u equal to 0 that is the first boundary condition and at y equal to delta your u should be equal to u infinity so two boundary conditions we have so we need three more okay so at y equal to 0 what else okay so d square u by dy square now in the case of Blasius solution we made this directly as 0 from the momentum equation okay so if you write the momentum equation at the wall so at the wall the momentum terms the inertial terms are 0 okay so your uh, friction term exactly balances your pressure gradient term unlike in the Blasius case, case where this is 0 and therefore this is 0 okay so you can write your nu d square u by dy square as 1 by rho dp by dx so this is your condition at the wall and also we know that outside the boundary layer if you go out if you write the momentum equation there you do not have any frictional term and you do not have any v velocity you have only the velocity in the x direction okay so that will be u infinity du infinity by dx should be exactly equal to a minus 1 by rho dp by dx okay so at y going to infinity this is at y equal to 0 and we also have seen that in the boundary layer uh, approximations your dp by dy equal to 0 therefore p is approximately the same anywhere therefore we can replace this term 1 by rho dp by dx with u infinity so this will be minus u infinity du infinity by dx this is a very important boundary condition okay now we have 3 so we need 2 more so now at y equal to delta what is the other boundary condition This, this has to be anyway 0 because the profile velocity equals u, u infinities and there is no friction there so outside the boundary layer so it has to satisfy the, uh, the 0 gradient condition okay and finally the last condition will be so in terms of the order you see we started with the wall this is u equal to 0 and then um, so we, we do not know what is the gradient at the wall but we have applied a second order derivative condition at y equal to delta we know u equal to u infinity we know the first order derivative should be 0 and again the curvature also so this is this is how all the 5 conditions are put and uh, if you substitute these 5 conditions into the assumed profile the fourth order polynomial finally you will get the following profile so <coughs> which is of the form u by u infinity is equal to capital F of eta plus lambda g of eta now 
where your f of eta is nothing but 2 eta minus 2 eta cube that is eta power 4 okay g of eta is equal to 1 by 6 and finally your lambda is nothing but a non dimensional parameter which is the ratio of the pressure force to the viscous force it is written as del square by nu into du infinity by dx which can also be written as minus del square by nu so I can write my du infinity by dx as 1 by rho u infinity into dp by dx so this will become mu into dp by dx okay <coughs> so is it clear so so i leave this as a exercise in fact i'll give you as a part of the assignment where you can substitute uh, these conditions and you can check if you you will be finally reaching this particular profile okay now the thing is this value this lambda carries some meaning here okay so typically if you are looking at adverse pressure gradient flows so where your dp by dx is positive so for flows with adverse pressure gradient typically what should be the condition for lambda hmm? Hmm? if dp by dx is positive then this has to be negative okay for favorable pressure gradient So there dp by dx will be negative so lambda should be greater than 0 and for flat plate case lambda should be equal to 0 okay so in fact if you put lambda equal to 0 this profile will become u by u infinity is capital F of lambda so which is nothing but the flat plate profile that you get if you assumed a quartic polynomial okay so that is the check now so this is how you get it now you can also plot the value of u by u infinity as a function of eta okay so eta along the y axis so eta varies from 0 and 1 and same thing with u by u infinity okay so now what I am going to do is I am going to plot this for different values of lambda now theoretically speaking I do not know what is the extent of lambda okay lambda could range from minus infinity to plus infinity but if I plot for lambda of some value like 30 what is observed is so this is this is like 1.2 so this is for lambda equal to 30. So the value of u by u infinity crosses 1 somewhere which is non physical basically with this kind of this is an approximate profile so you do not know where it, the profile will become physical and non physical but if you use very large values of lambda like 30 this becomes non physical okay. So now if you go to smaller values like for example lambda equal to 12 now this becomes well behaved it goes smoothly to 1 and then lambda of 0 this is your Blasius profile and lambda of say minus 12 so this is your lambda minus 12 lambda equal to 0 lambda equal to 12 okay so now you could have it gone to various negative values but we are just plotting till here now the reason why we are stopping at minus 12 is that you can check uh, from the profile you can check the condition for separation okay so the condition for separation is what du by dy at y equal to 0 equal to 0 so if you 
put that condition and check the value of lambda comes out to be minus 12 that is the lambda for criteria for separation so that is why we are stopping it on minus 12 so be, if you go below minus 12 so the boundary layer would have separated and you cannot find uh, uh, solutions from the boundary layer equations. Okay, so that is the lower cutoff, and the upper cutoff is not 30 because it becomes non physical, so we are stopping from the value of 12. So the lambda values that we are usually interested will range from minus 12 to 12. Okay, minus 12 that is the extreme case of separation, and even when you have very favorable pressure gradients, you should not have such large pressure gradients such that the profile becomes non physical. Okay, so this this is the condition under which uh, you know you are doing the solution. What is the condition of separation? So condition of separation. That is this. We will we'll check that now. Okay. So let us check du by dy. So from this profile, that will be what u infinity into. So this this I can write as du by d eta into d eta by dy. Okay. So my eta is nothing but y by delta. So d eta by dy will be 1 by delta so that will be this times uh, so you have to differentiate f which will be 2 minus 6 eta square plus 4 eta cube plus lambda into g eta okay if you differentiate that you will get lambda by 6 1 minus 6 eta plus 9 eta square minus 4 eta cube okay so now du by dy at y equal to 0 nothing but du by dy at eta equal to 0 here which is u infinity by delta into all these terms get knocked off 2 plus lambda by 6 the condition for separation is this should be 0 therefore lambda will be minus 12 this is this is why we are stopping there okay so we will restrict our values of lambda to minus between minus 12 and 12 for most of the cases that we are interested okay so now so we have estimated the approximate profile so this is how Paul Housen did he guessed uh, he assumed a quartic profile and then uh, he restricted the values of lambda because this is the separation case and the other one goes non physical beyond that and then this profile is now substituted into the momentum integral equation okay so if you if you now substitute this So first we calculate the momentum and the displacement thicknesses from the profile so first uh, if I if I substitute okay let me call this uh, profile as uh, let me call this as number 1 okay this is number 2 3 and this is profile is number 4 substitute 4 into 2 and 3 and calculate your delta 1 and delta 2 so we will get delta 1 uh, by delta so what I am going to do I am transforming my variable y in terms of eta okay so this will be dy by d eta into d eta so so dy by d eta is nothing but delta okay so therefore I can bring the delta in the left hand side so this will be delta 1 by delta will be the limits will become now 0 to 1 into 1 minus u by u infinity which will be 1 minus this profile right here which is f of eta minus g of lambda into g of eta
okay now if you substitute this profile and you integrate it out you will find that this comes out to be 1 by 10 into t minus lambda by 12 okay let this call let us call this as number 4 okay this is number 5 all right so similarly if you substitute into the momentum thickness and integrate it this is 0 to 1 1 minus f of minus g lambda e of eta sorry into f of eta plus lambda into g of eta d eta so if you integrate it out this gives delta 2 by delta as 1 by 63 37 by 5 minus lambda by 15 minus lambda square by 144 so this I will call as equation number 6 so what I am doing is I am just calculating estimating my an expression for the momentum thickness and the displacement thickness in terms of lambda okay because now lambda is a function of x strictly speaking if you look at a particular problem and if you define your x like this and your infinity is a function of x your lambda is also a function of x so because your boundary layer thickness changes with x and so is your displacement thickness and momentum thickness so everything is a function of lambda which is in turn in turn a function of x okay so for different way positions as you keep marching from the stagnation point say somewhere so the value of lambda keeps changing and accordingly the value of these different thicknesses will change okay so once we have estimated this we will now substitute this into the momentum integral uh, 1 so before that we are going to slightly rewrite the momentum integral such that we will eliminate terms which are appearing in terms of delta okay we will we will reconstruct the momentum integral so what we will do is we will multiply equation 1 by delta 2 by nu on both sides and rewrite so this term can be split as you can write this as uh, u infinity square d delta 2 by dx plus you can write this as 2 u infinity into delta 2 du infinity by dx plus you have delta 1 u infinity du infinity by dx is equal to so if you multiply so delta 2 by nu delta 2 by nu so this will become simply delta 2 okay now if you rearrange this uh, so what I am going to do I am dividing throughout by u infinity okay so the first term here will be u infinity delta 2 by nu into d delta 2 by dx plus I can combine these two terms because du infinity by dx is common to both okay the second and third terms and I can write this as uh, 2 plus uh, delta 1 by delta 2 into delta 2 square by nu into du infinity by dx so I can combine the two terms in this way so the first term will be twice uh, so I am dividing by u infinity so twice delta 2 square by nu into du infinity by dx the second term the, the third term here will be so basically delta 2 cancel so this is delta 1 delta 2 by nu into du infinity by dx okay it is just a little bit of rewriting on the right hand side I have delta 2 by u infinity into du by okay now this is my modified slightly modified form of the momentum integral equation which I will number as number 7 
okay now the reason why we are rewriting this is now these are in terms of delta 1 by delta 2 okay and delta 1 by delta 2 will eliminate basically delta okay and even terms like delta 2 square into du infinity by dx is actually can be written in terms of lambda and this particular expression so all of them will in will not finally involve an expression for delta okay so now i'm going to introduce certain terms here just to simplify the equation i'm i'm going to say that mm, delta delta 2 square by nu i'll call this as some parameter z and this entire factor here as a parameter k okay so and since k is a function of lambda because now k is a function of delta 2 square d infinity by dx which is nothing but a function of lambda okay so k is a function of lambda and i i will i will express this ratio delta 1 by delta 2 as some function of k which is also a function of lambda basically indirectly okay if i write f1 as a function of k which is nothing but a function of lambda and the term on the right hand side i will call this as another function f2 which is a function of k which is nothing but a function of lambda so therefore my z is equal to del 2 square by nu and my k is nothing but z into du infinity by dx and my k is equal to uh, now i can rewrite this k now this k is uh, z into d infinity by dx i can rewrite this in terms of uh, delta 2 by delta the whole square into lambda because this d infinity by dx i can write this as lambda into nu by delta square okay so already this z is delta 2 square by nu 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 cancel so you have delta 2 by delta the whole square into lambda so therefore I can express my k in terms of lambda directly okay so once again you see now the k is in terms of delta 2 by delta okay and f1 of k which I have introduced here is nothing but delta 1 by delta 2 okay now we have got expressions for delta 1 by delta delta 2 by delta so I am just going to take the ratio of these two okay so this comes out as 63 into 3 minus lambda by 12 by this is 15 minus lambda square by 144 okay so this is just the ratio of delta 1 by delta 2 okay and now my f2 of k is nothing but delta 2 by u infinity into du by dy at y equal to 0 this is my rhs term so even this uh, can be written so du by dy at y equal to 0 we have already determined uh, that was coming out as uh, 2 plus lambda by 6 if you remember okay so So this this is this is nothing but delta two by u infinity into du by d eta, okay, into so in fact this is the du by d eta into at eta equal to zero into d eta by dy, okay. So du by we have already the polynomial for u. If you put that, you will get one by sixty three two plus lambda by six into 37 by 5 minus lambda by 15 minus lambda square by 144 so this will be the expression for f2 of k okay
so this du by d eta eta equal to 0 we have already derived that is 2 plus lambda by 6 okay we have we have differentiated the profile in, in the previous step you, you can check that we have differentiated the profile and at y equal to 0 that counts comes out as u infinity by delta into 2 plus lambda by 6 and uh, uh, u infinity u infinity there can cancels so this becomes ratio of delta 2 by delta okay so this uh, which is nothing but this expression right here 1 by 63 okay okay if you are having problem I will just maybe expand it so this will be delta 2 by u infinity into u infinity by delta into 2 plus lambda by 6 okay so this entire term right here is this okay this is from the previous step when we calculated du by d eta eta, eta equal to 0 into d eta by dy is this entire expression okay this is multiplied so u infinity this cancels now this is 2 plus lambda by 6 into d delta 2 by delta so we have already already derived an expression for delta 2 by delta in terms of lambda so so this gives you the final expression for so now we have expressed everything in terms of lambda okay so z is a function of delta 2 square and delta 2 is a function of lambda k is a function of lambda f1 is a function of lambda f2 is a function of lambda okay so so now that we have everything so we can substitute these expressions into the momentum integral equation of the form 7 and uh, probably as you might have guessed by now we cannot solve this equation by hand okay so this is a tedious expression so we we will once again have to use the numerical method to solve it so I will just cast it in the final form uh, so I can I can express I can write my delta 2 d delta 2 by dx in terms of z okay so I have z is delta 2 square by nu therefore dz by dx will be twice delta 2 into d delta 2 by dx okay so this will be half of what dz by dx okay so substituting into uh, equation number 7 I can write this as half of u infinity into dz by dx okay so I am writing this in terms of z here and the other terms we cannot do anything they are just uh, they are as it is algebraic terms so this will be 2 plus f1 okay 2 plus f1 of k multiplied by k this entire term is k on the right hand side you have f2 of k okay now k is a function of lambda so therefore this can be written as dz by dx is equal to h of k by u infinity where my h of k is nothing but what 2 2 f2 minus 2 times 2 plus f1 into k okay so this is the final ordinary differential equation that I have to solve okay in order to get the value of z and now z is nothing but delta 2 which is nothing but the momentum thickness okay so once you get your momentum thickness from this expression you know for a particular value of uh, uh, delta 2 you can calculate the corresponding value of lambda and therefore you can calculate your delta 1 and also your delta okay so so this this is how this is how it goes you know you have to solve this ODE for different values of uh, uh, z and 
you know now z can be uh, expressed in terms of uh, lambda okay so for that particular value of z you have to solve for lambda and then you calculate the other expressions for displacement thickness and the boundary layer thickness so this is how we have to numerically solve this equation okay so to just give an example uh, in fact if, if you if you just happen to see this particular equation this h of k can be uh, predetermined before it can be solved and kept as a table because it is purely a function of k which is a function of lambda so for different values of lambda between minus 12 and 12 you can get all these functions right you can calculate now this is a function of what f2 f1 and k okay so you can get expressions for k f2 f1 everything as a function of lambda put it in a nice nice table and therefore you can determine h of k directly okay so now this can be arranged as a table now every time that you solve for new value of z you you put the corresponding value of h of k corresponding to that value of lambda okay and then get the new value of z and from there you determine your delta and therefore you determine the new value of lambda so from the lookup table you can keep on uh, taking the correct current value of uh, h of k okay so in fact all this had been uh, tabulated uh, by Holstein and Bolin and if you happen to look at uh, the book by boundary layer theory by Schlichting so he has mentioned uh, he has tabulated all these values you know f1 f2 k h of k as a function of lambda so okay this this has been tabulated in fact you yourself can do that as a very nice exercise you know this is not difficult you take values of lambda between minus 12 and 12 calculate all these parameters you just create a table and once you do that every time you solve for new value of z and you calculate new value of lambda you have to simply take the value of h corresponding to that lambda that is it okay so like that you keep marching so this is also a marching problem you start from some point maybe the stagnation point and from there you keep marching for different values of x so for each value of x you get a new value of z your new value of delta 2 delta 1 delta like that you keep marching till separation okay so how do you know whether it is separated so by each value of z you now calculate the new value of lambda if your lambda comes out to be minus 12 that means that at that point the flow has separated okay so this can be applied to any kind of uh, pressure gradients you know adverse or favorable for favorable it is restricted to a maximum value of lambda equal to 12 okay for adverse pressure gradient it is restricted up to the point of separation that is up to lambda equal to minus 12 so using this uh, let us quickly apply this to a small case where it is flow past a circular cylinder uh, and we will see how we can uh, use this algorithm to calculate all the parameters okay so I am I am just going to use this final expression here so flow past circular cylinder so this is your cylinder with radius let us call r naught and theta therefore the coordinate that we are talking about x is, is the uh, is basically the angular coordinate the space swept by the sector that is nothing but r theta okay and when it is approaching the cylinder the flow has a velocity a constant velocity v infinity t infinity now once it comes encounters the stagnation and starts flowing past this then this becomes the free stream velocity which is a function of x okay so for this particular problem if you are looking at a region close to the stagnation point how are we going to find the solution to the stagnation point problem so once again in the similarity solution we did this okay we took the stagnation flow for the Faulkner scan solution and we have transformed that to a cylindrical coordinate system and that, that gave us the solution for the stagnation region uh, skin friction coefficient as well as the Nusselt number so here
similar way we will assume a profile from the inviscid potential flow which is nothing but x by r naught okay so at x is equal to 0 so this becomes 0 and at x is equal to uh, uh, r naught by 2 so this becomes uh, exactly equal to twice of uh, u infinity okay so uh, for this particular case we are going to look at uh, for the region close to stagnation point so I can replace my sign x by r naught as x by r naught you know for small values of x by r naught so therefore u infinity of x in that particular region will be 2 v infinity into x by r naught this is valid only close to the stagnation region where your x by r naught is very small so the condition is x by r naught is quite small now the velocity distribution we have already determined and we have also determined the final expression for dz by dx now if you if you are smart enough and you quickly observe now your u infinity now here is a function of x and at stagnation point your u infinity is 0 okay so for this expression to be finite okay if u infinity goes to 0 that means dz by dx goes to 0 at stagnation point to avoid that h, h of k should go to 0 okay so therefore at the stagnation point the condition is for the circular cylinder case h of k has to be 0 so we already have the expression for uh, h of k which is nothing but this so this has to be 0 so that means 2 f2 of k minus 2 into 2 plus f1 of k k equal to 0 so if you substitute for f1 f2 and k in terms of lambda you will get a nice uh, cubic polynomial in cubic uh, algeb algebraic equation in terms of lambda this will be 147.4 lambda square so this is the resulting algebraic expression that you will get if you substitute for f1 f2 so if you solve this uh, algebraic equation you will get three roots because it's a cubic uh, polynomial you will get la value of lambda one of the roots will be 7.052 the second root will be 17.75 third root will be minus 70 okay since our region of interest is minus 2 12 to 12 we'll ignore these two roots we will take only the root which gives you 7.052 therefore the value of uh, 7 lambda equal to 7.052 corresponds to the stagnation point okay this is the value of lambda at stagnation point please remember that at the stagnation point also there is a certain value of the boundary layer thickness boundary layer thickness is not zero because here the flow comes like this and it divides like this if you remember the 2d stagnation flow for the Faulkner scan wedge problem where your uh, m is equal to 1 okay the flow comes like this and it bifurcates okay and here the boundary layer thickness is not 0 okay at the stagnation point okay and corresponding to that you have a finite value of lambda which is 7.052 okay so this value of lambda corresponds to a particular value of delta in fact okay so you can calculate the value of boundary layer thickness for this particular value of lambda now how do we do that how do we calculate the value of uh, delta so we already have an expression for lambda which is nothing but del square by nu into du infinity by dx you remember this is how we defined our lambda okay so once you have your lambda you can directly calculate your delta from here okay because you know for this particular problem what is the free stream velocity gradient okay so therefore your delta square will be nu lambda by 
which will be nothing but u lambda for this problem it will be 2 v infinity r naught okay so this is your profile all right so therefore your delta square will be nothing but if you substitute the value of lambda 7.052 in the stagnation region your delta square will be 3.526 into v r naught by u infinity okay so if you multiply and divide by r naught you can write this in terms of the reynolds number no u infinity r naught by nu so this becomes a reynolds number so you can get an expression for uh, delta delta 2 delta by r not in terms of the reynolds number okay so <coughs> this is how you how you get the expression for delta and now once you get it this is valid only for the stagnation point or the region which is very close to the stagnation point now if you are interested in calculating the flow past the cylinder from the stagnation point all the way where it separates okay so it may separate somewhere here for example maybe at 75 degrees okay so till separation you can use this technique to march forward and calculate the value of boundary layer thickness the displacement thickness momentum thickness also you can calculate the separation point okay the location where exactly it separates okay for that you have to use the complete velocity profile okay so use the full velocity profile and you have to solve this ODE numerically so you start from the stagnation point at the stagnation point you know the value of delta from this expression okay so you know the corresponding value of delta 2 and therefore you know the value of z okay so at the stagnation point you know the value of lambda you know the value of delta so you know you can calculate the value of delta 2 okay therefore you can calculate the value of z so that is your initial condition okay you start from there you march from the stagnation point you keep solving this ODE by Euler's method you can get the value of z at each of those locations for example you can discretize this into 100 points for example okay I am not putting 100 points I am just giving a rough uh, estimation so for each of these points you can calculate z and on the right hand side this is the value of z for the previous uh, point okay so h of k corresponding to the previous point so every time you calculate uh, z now you can you have to calculate the new value of lambda okay so for that we can use the expression z is equal to delta 2 square by nu and okay so let me erase this okay so delta 2 square I am substituting from here okay so this is nothing but this into delta square and delta square uh, is nothing but this particular expression right here okay so I am combining uh, this expression where I, I, I can calculate delta and put it into this I can calculate my delta 2 and from there I can determine my relation between lambda and z so for a given problem this is all fixed okay now the value of del lambda is to be determined okay so for a given value of z that you solve so this equation is an algebraic equation now this is uh, not so straightforward to solve by hand you have to solve it iteratively again you can use some numerical method like Newton's method or bisection method okay solve this iteratively for the latest value of lambda at that value of z so now this will become from this value of lambda you have already prepared the lookup table you can calculate the latest value of h and now 
you can go to the next point get the value of z and again keep doing it so till you reach a point where lambda reaches minus 12 okay at that point you stop okay so this is how you determine where exactly the separation happens and also the corresponding values of the all the th three thicknesses boundary layer displacement and momentum okay so with that uh, i think we'll stop here and tomorrow we'll continue from this point to the heat transfer problem